Hi there. In this video, we'll be taking a look at interrupts, both internal and external. What do I mean by interrupts? Well, most computers are sequential devices, uh, including the uh, Arduino system. It can only execute one instruction at a time. It may seem as though computers can do all sorts of things at the same time, but in actual fact, a conventional processor, like the ones that we use 99.9% .9 of the time, they can only do one thing at a given time. They do them very, very quickly, but it's only one thing at a time. We're looking here at the uh, at the blink sketch and uh, as you've observed I'm sure the uh, let's get close up here you can see that the little LED is blinking once every second and that's because it's in an infinite loop and it's saying turn the LED on, wait one second, and then turn it off, wait one second, and go back to the top, which is to turn the LED on and wait one second, and so on. There's no room for the LED in the sketch, or there's no room in the sketch for anything else to happen. And in fact, if we try to put something else in the blink sketch, it will, in small or large matter, manner, uh, change the timing of the blinking. So let's take a look at the sketch. So here's what's actually going on. It's just looping. If we were to drop in some more instructions. We would delay the timing of this, uh, especially if we have other delays. So there has to be another way, and there are two different ways that you can do it. One is with an interrupt that works by setting an internal clock or, or checking an internal top clock, like a, a stopwatch. And when the stopwatch reaches a certain value, then undertake a certain routine. If you do it that way, you can do other things and not require this delay these are the two things that hold up, hold us up from doing any other instructions. In other words, it would be really nice if rather than delaying, we could do something during this time. And so that's what an interrupt is, uh, enables us to do. There's another sketch called Blink without delay. And that's this sketch here. Now this does exactly the same thing as far as the LED is concerned. It does exactly the same thing as the blink sketch. Here are the differences. So we keep the LED pin as 13. What we do is we save the state of the LED in an integer. We also declare an unsigned long uh, variable called previous millis and a long interv interval of 1000. An unsigned long is a kind of a special number. 
And uh, you can find out more about this in the Arduino site. All you do is Google Arduino unsigned long. It's a number that is 32 bits long. It ranges from 0 to 4 billion, 4.3 billion. And it indicates, and it can hold, all of the seconds, or all of, sorry, all of the milliseconds between when you start a program and 50 days afterwards. Going down to the loop, we declare another unsigned long and call it current millis. And what this is, it equals a variable which is known by the Arduino system called millis. And millis is the time period that has elapsed in milliseconds since the program was started. This number will count up until about 50 days after the start of the program, and then it will reset. So uh, you can run this, you can run the sketch for up to 50 days and use this timer that we're setting up here. So current millis is set up as the time in, my, in milliseconds since the program was started. And back here, previous millis was set as, at zero. So what's going on is we're comparing in this loop uh, the current milliseconds minus the previous one that we last encountered in this loop. And if it's greater than the interval that we've set, which is 1,000 milliseconds, then do something. And in this case, it's if the LED state is low, then change the LED state to, LED state to high. Otherwise, set it to low. So it's just flipping the value of the LED, uh, the state of the LED. And then finally, digitally write that. What this enables us to do is in this spot here with the comment, we can do something else. And as long as we don't put too many delays in this area here with another routine, we can also get the LED to blink on and off once a second. So I'll upload that. And the proof is in the pudding. Let's take a look at the LED on the Uno. So here it is here. I think you can see it. So that's one way of allowing the sketch that you write to not be stuck on, uh, stuck in a delay doing nothing. You can actually get it to do other things by using the uh, strategy in the uh, blink without delay sketch. Let's consider now another slightly different problem that would require the use of an interrupt, but this would be a different kind of interrupt. We've got this shift out demonstration here. A few videos ago we uh, looked at how to convert from a serial stream to a parallel stream using uh, an extra chip called a 74HC595. And the shift register uh, writes out two LEDs, to eight LEDs, uh, the numbers from 0 to 255 in binary. And uh, when it gets to the top number, 255, it resets to 0. The problem that 
I would like to introduce is I'd like to be able to introduce a push button that would reset the counting back to zero. And I'd like to be able to do it at any point in the count. And further, when, the, when I press the button, I don't want to have uh, a, any delay. So we could take a look at the current shift out program and uh, look at the hardware that we have and consider what the, the problem is from a hardware point of view. So I've got the, the lights counting up. And if the only way currently I can get it to reset back to zero is by pressing the reset button. And there's a little bit of a delay before it starts counting up again. I want to be able to introduce a switch here that would allow me to press the button and it would reset the uh, counting back to zero. So I've made some changes to the shift out demo and I've called it interrupt demo. And let's just take a look at what the differences are between the two. Let's go down first to the loop. In the loop, rather than a for routine, I'm using an if. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to introduce using an interrupt, the number zero, the binary number zero, into this uh, programming. And when I press the button, it will uh, reset the number to display, set it to zero. Can't do it using the loop. The way we do that is to create a routine, a subroutine, so to speak, called reset. And using this, it sets the master reclear, reclear pin to low to clear out the setting in the 595 chip, set number to display a zero, latch it into the 595 chip, shift out the number, and allow, allow the, uh, the 595 to display it on the LEDs. This reset is invoked using what's called an external interrupt. The external interrupt is set up here using the attach interrupt function. What this does is it says if pin 2 falls, invoke the reset routine and attach this as an interrupt. An interrupt, by attaching an interrupt, I can interrupt any currently running program with a routine. And in this case, it's reset. What happens is the current routine that's running is put kind of put to sleep, so to speak, temporarily, and reset gets run, uh, the previous um, program gets awakened and it runs as though nothing had happened. So uh, let's upload this. And look at it on the camera.
So what do we have? We have basically the same thing happening, although the way I'm doing the counting is different. It's doing it at the same rate. There's really no difference in terms of the way it's counting or the way it's displaying. The 595 chip is working in much the same way that it was working with the previous shift out uh, sketch. Now I've put the um, button here and I'm going to connect one side of the button to uh, zero or ground. I'll connect the other side of the button to pin two. Now the way I, uh, I set up the sketch is that I enabled pin two as an input and I invoked the pull up, the internal pull up resistors in the Arduino. So pin two is set up as high because there's an internal pull up resisting pulling up the voltage of this pin internally and it's currently high and it will stay high until we ground this wire. When we ground this wire it will invoke the attach interrupt part of the sketch and the interrupt will be invoked. Now I don't actually need a button here. If I remove this and set the pin 2 by grounding it, it should reset the counter and start from zero. And it's done that. Let's do it again. Now notice that I can keep the once I ground it, it doesn't matter how long I hold the uh, pin at zero or at ground, it will immediately start to recount and it will continue to count. So by grounding, it's only when the voltage on this pin goes from high to low. If it remains low or it goes back to high, nothing happens. It's only when the voltage falls on pin 2 that the interrupt is invoked. Let's instead connect the pin to our switch, our little push button. I'm going to click the button now and it's reset. I'll click it and I'll hold it down and it starts to work. Now I could, if I wanted to, change the sketch so that it held the, uh, it suspended the counting as long as the button was pressed, but I didn't want to do that. So here's an example of using attach interrupt to invoke uh, an external interrupt that happens with a button or it could happen with uh, a tilt sensor or any other digital signal. You can attach it to any digital pin and get it to interrupt the flow of a program either by uh, setting it as falling or rising or anything in between. Have fun and see you next time.